Hello everyone, it's Leo, and in this video we're going to talk about episode 45 from Star Twinkle Brikua. Finally, it's time to talk about this episode, it's time to talk about two things I love, which are Hikaru and Kapard. But just before I start talking about the episode itself, I just want to say something about uh, that's on top of my mind right now, so I don't forget along the video. Lala's voice in this episode was really strange, wasn't it? There was something wrong with it, like, it felt like when she was Kira Milky, it was fine, but when she was Lala, it was really strange, it was weird. But anyways, <clears throat> if you want to create an atmosphere, a gloomy atmosphere, what do you do? Rain. Put on a rainy day, more of a silent episode, and that's it for you. We have a situation in which four of the five girls got their twinkle imagination and Hikaru is the only one that doesn't have one. And on top of that, we have a situation in which four of the five girls know what they want to do in the future or at least they have a vision of what they want to do. And the only one who does not know is Hikaru. Hikaru does not know anything about what she wants to do or and then we're, we're getting in like at the end of this series and it means goodbye. Usually it means goodbye and specifically in Star Twinkle's case, it means that most of them are going to say goodbye to each other. Lana wants to study abroad, Uni and Lala are aliens, they're probably not going to live on Earth and there's Madoka who didn't decide what she wants to do. She's probably going to study abroad as well or she want, she's probably going to do it in a different place than she is right now. So there is Hikaru. She is completely by herself. Like she knows that there will come a time, there will come a point in time in which she's going to have to say goodbye. And she doesn't know what to do. And she's feeling it. And like, I think that it was very nice that the narrative tried to create this atmosphere for us, the viewers, in this episode, in which we had Lala talking way more than Hikaru, which is pretty strange. Hikaru being silent, which is the, the strangest thing ever. And Hikaru not laughing and not being all smiley all the time, which she always is, which is also a very strange thing. So we had that situation in which the girls were, uh, Lala and Hikaru were, uh, and they met with the people at school. And it was so fun seeing Fua interacting and Lala also very happy. And as Lala said, it's very uh, peculiar of her what she did because uh, it's, strange for her to be able to open up like that with people and that like, it felt it made me feel happy for Lala. It made me feel happy for Lala. And uh, Hikaru, uh, she barely interacted. She barely knew how to deal with a situation that's not very Hikaru-like. And when she went to the planetarium, it was clear what was going on. I mean, it was clear for us, but it made it like the episode made it clear like uh, verbally. And so uh, she started talking to Yoji and that was one of the most interesting scenes. We were able to see like the past Yoji, which was very nice. And we saw that Yoji is friends with uh, Hikaru's grandmother and father. And it was like a very nice thing to, you know, it was a very nice scene. But I feel like the most interesting thing about that was the philosophy behind everything, the argument behind it. Because what he kind of feeling is that she's being left behind by her friends, not in the sense that her friends don't like her anymore, but the fact that she is, like, they all have a goal in their minds and they're doing it, they're trying to do it, they're trying to improve themselves somehow, and she's being left behind because she's doing nothing. And then I feel like what Yoji said is really important, especially for people that are growing up, like reaching maturity in life, maybe finishing college. I think it applies very well. I went through that and I actually I kind of still do because we tend to compare ourselves to people and then we tend to compare ourselves to our friends who may be achieving things or maybe getting jobs or maybe getting paid a lot who are traveling who are dating who are getting married who are having children who are like getting living the best moments of their lives and sometimes we are not and we tend to look at them and say wow they're doing it I'm not what's wrong with me is there something wrong with me? Is the universe conspiring against me? And you know, this is a very human thing to feel. And usually I feel like media didn't touch this topic for a while. I remember when I was growing up, I didn't see much of this, this type of questioning, this type of philosophy in media, you know, questioning this type of thing. 
We didn't. And that is more of a recent thing, I feel like. And for Breaker to talk about that, that felt really cool. And for Yoji to talk about things, I feel like the thing that defines Hikaru the most is that she is herself. She is unapologetically Hikaru. And that is what defines her. That is what actually makes her feel herself. And she, she's not afraid of being who she is. And she's not afraid of having this naive look at life. And honestly, after this episode, I feel like she understands what she's doing. And she does that because she feels that's the best way to look at the world. She knows that she's naive. She knows there's something else, but she believes to, to believe in people. She chooses to believe in people. Oh my God, she chooses to believe in people. You know, that's Hikaru, that's her essence, and that's who she chooses to be as well. Because she, like, she was all alone before the girls came and then like she never tried to adapt she never tried to adapt she was always unapologetically hikaru and that's something i love about her and then we have kapard on the other side so we have like those are basically the two important characters in this episode apart from Miyoji, and i dare say fua as well because i think that fu is being more prominent now that she's probably going to be important in this last stretch and i feel like those two were like Hikaru and Kapard, so we have those two characters. And um, they're very different, they have opposing views because uh, Kapard does not believe in people from other worlds and Hikaru, she believes and she wants to meet them, she wants to, you know, live uh, and enjoy her life together with aliens, she wants to know everyone, she wants to make friends with everybody. And we have those two clashing points of view and then we have a very serious battle between them. And I feel like since Hikaru was still feeling conflicted about herself, she wasn't able to defend herself properly. Not only in the, like physically, in the attacks she tried, but also in, uh, in a sense of not feeling uh, confident enough to defend her case and to defend her personality. And that, that, that felt in the battle, you know, she lost. And one thing that really struck me strange was that she used her star punch, her normal star punch, without buffing it with a star pen. And I was like, girl, what are you doing? Why don't you use like PC's star punch? I don't know, like use something different. But then it made sense at the end, since she, at the end of the battle, she also used star punch. And then like she basically lost the battle. The water attacks from Kapard were pretty cool. Kapard was amazing. And then we were also able to look at Kapard and to understand him a little better. Like we knew his backstory. We kind of knew his backstory, but then in this episode, we were able to see it clearly, clearly. I'm bad today, I'm sorry. What's going on? We were able to see it clearly. And uh, Hikaru also like got this idea from him and she said, you don't believe, uh, like you don't believe in people. And that's like his motto. He don't believe in, he doesn't believe in anyone. And then um, after that, the girls came, they, they saved Hikaru and then Hikaru started believing in herself again because of what Lala said to her, which was pretty nice. And at the end of the day, like she was able to transform. Then we had a solo transformation from Hikaru. That was also cute. And when she transformed, she had her moment against Kapard. That was cool. Like, honestly, a very cool moment of Cure Star. And honestly, I kind of like almost cried at that moment. She felt so powerful and so honest. That, that that's, the basically, that's basically the embodiment of Cure Star. And I love it so much. And at the end of the day, I felt like it was pretty cool. The battle was pretty cool and she was able to win and she was able to use that different star punch that was awesome and pretty strong and loved that you go girl and the girls were able to defeat Kapard and that's what Hikaru told him like she basically told him that uh he does not believe in people and that's fine that's him that's what happened to him and she has an uh, she has a different outcome she has a different way of looking at things and we saw that in the movie as well, and Lala even mentioned it. And um, at the end of the episode, the way she basically gave him like a second chance and like, come with me, I want to know Kapard. 
And I think that one of the things, like, let me just finish and then I go back to the philosophy of the of Hikaru's way of seeing life. Kabar got uh, captured, basically. He was giving in. He was almost believing it, believing in things. And then the dildos captured Kabar. I'm sorry, but they really looked like some... Can I say that here? I'm so sorry if you're younger, but if you're like way too young, you shouldn't even be here on YouTube. You should be on YouTube Kids. But um, that was very weird and kind of ugly, the way Capard was captured, and something will happen to him. Damn, and something already happened to Tenjo because she wasn't able to fulfill the mission. But anyways, and the episode's over, all of the girls with twinkle imagination. But now I want to talk a little bit more about Hikaru's philosophy, which is, for me, something impressive and something like very, very interesting. I think that Hikaru, she does not see groups. She does not see um, groups of people. She sees ind individuals and she believes that every individual can shine. Honestly, I feel like maybe when we're kids, we're able to see this, but when we grow older, we start seeing people less as individuals and more as a member of society, a citizen, um, a gay man, a fat woman, a black man. You know, we start seeing stereotypes and we start grouping people in things. It's easier to look at them this way. Hikaru doesn't. She she sees a person and that's that. And honestly, sometimes I believe I, I see things like that, but when, if you think about it, that's not really the case. I feel like this is a very naive, naive look in life, but it's one that can work. And it's one that could make things better, but it's hard. And honestly, I don't believe we're ready to look at things like that. Anyways, episode 45, impressive episode. And I've been saying this for the past like 10 episodes of Star Twinkle, I don't know, except for the Christmas episode, but you know, overall, like Star Twinkle, it's really doing it. It's really doing it. Like those last episodes, especially the character driven ones, there's not much to say. Anyways, guys, please leave a comment with your opinions on episode 45. Let's keep talking in the comment box. Madoka's almost here and episode 46 is almost here as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye-bye.